Footprinting through social networking sites. So attackers uh, use social engineering tricks to gather sensitive information from social networking websites such as Facebook, MySpace, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, Google, et cetera, et cetera. So social engineering is huge. People don't care about securing their sites most of the time. The ones that are secured, you can tell that those people are security centric. So you're going to have to change your tactics accordingly. If you're going to be phishing people like that, that have their sites locked down, that have taken the time to read about the security, then certainly you're going to need to craft more um, relevant fishes to them. You're going to have to do a little more homework. So that could give you an idea of how much time you're going to vest in trying to get a successful fish. So attackers create a fake profile on a social networking site and then use the fake identity um, to lure the employees to give up their sensitive information. This is very common. People do this to people all the time. Um, and also like exes and things like that do this quite a bit. So whomever's trying to friend you, if you don't know them personally, you should be very suspicious of that kind of thing. Employees may uh, post personal information such as birth, educational, government background, spouse names, etc., and information about their companies such as potential clients, business partners, trade secrets, business websites, companies' upcoming news, mergers, acquisitions, etc. So if they're a publicly traded company, you may get some insider trading info there, which would be a find as well for the company when you're conducting a security assessment. That information cannot be leaked. Attackers collect information about employers' interests by tracking their groups and then uh, trick the employee to reveal more information. So this is very common stuff. <clears throat> Employees are a lot easier to attack than the organization. So when you're conducting an assessment, you want to give the company an idea how bad it's going to be. So this is important stuff. Don't discount it. Information available on social networking sites. So what an attacker gets, contact info, location info, friends list info, Identity, identity of family members, et cetera, et cetera, interest and activities. And then what users do, they maintain a profile, they connect to friends and chatting, um, share photos and videos, play games and join groups and create events. Everybody's got a social profile nowadays, right? What organizations do, um, they conduct user surveys, they promote products, user support, recruitment, and background checks to hire employees. So this is their social footprint. And then, through that social footprint, the attacker can get the following business strategies, product profiles, social engineering information, platform technology information, and types of businesses. So uh, the type of business that they are. So website footprinting. Website footprinting refers to monitoring and analyzing the target organization's website for information. Browsing the target website may uh, provide the following. Software used um, and its version the operating system used, the subdirectories and parameters, the file names, path, database, field name or query, scripting platform, uh, contact details, and CMS details. So customer management service uh, system details. So you can use Burp, Zap Proxy, Paros Proxy, Website Information, our Website Informer, and Firebug, etc., to view headers to provide the following information: connection status and type. Accept ranges, last modified information, X powered by information, and web server in use and its information. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff that they're throwing out right here. Some of the key takeaways for the test are going to be um, browsing a target website may provide the following. Be very familiar with that. Um, nothing special about that. Um, this is just business stuff, right? Nothing hacking related. But in the third one, using Burp, Zap Proxy, Paros Proxy, and Website Informer, and Firebug. So you need to be familiar with these. You need to do labs on all of these. You need to know what these are. You will see test questions about that. Um, you might have a multiple choice that will list a bunch of tools, and one of them will be Paros Proxy, for example. And it will say, um, can I use this to footprint a website? What, what are the, which of the following are website footprinting tools? And you might have three of them listed. So they may list Burp, Zap Proxy, Paros Proxy. Um, Firebug, and then something else to footprint a website that's not a real tool, and you might have to guess the first four. So you kind of need to be pretty familiar with these. And then down in here, we've got a lot of details that are very important. So connection status, connection type, accept ranges, last modified information, X powered by information, web server in use, and its version. So how do you get all this information? This is important stuff. So you need to understand what each one of these are. If you don't understand them and you can't figure it out, let us know. We'll, we'll talk to you about it on the chat or um, on the blog. But 
um, you can also Google this stuff to check it out and see how to get it. So what you're looking at over there on the right is, I uh, believe that's uh, one of the proxy programs that's pulling that up, uh, probably Burp. I think that's an older version of Burp there. So um, it will show you what the headers are and things like that. All the information coming and all the information going is what a proxy will give you if it's capturing it, right? If it's being told to capture it. So um, the accept ranges are uh, like what IPs they're accepting. They're accepting uh, all US or conus based traffic, it appears, because you VPN to different locations around the states and tried connecting, you were able to. You tried to connect from Australia, Japan, and France, and you were not able to. So they're only accepting CONUS, Continental United States Connections, right? So website footprinting. Examining HTML source, uh, examining the HTML source provides the following. Comments in the source code, uh, contact details for the web developer or admin, you will rarely find that these days. And then file system structure and script type, that you will find in there. Examining cookies may provide software in use and its behavior, scripting platforms used. Um, not very likely. Cookies are pretty plain today. They're pretty dumbed down, and most of them are encrypted now. If they're not encrypted, that's a find. You know, everybody should be encrypting their cookies uh, to prevent revealing this kind of information. Website footprinting using web spiders. What's a spider? A spider is something that goes out and just searches every possible link on the page. So it loads the page and it'll visit every single link. And then in every one of those pages that it visited, it'll visit every one of those links. So it's kind of a recursive deep dive search. It's going to go through the entire thing. It's going to do directory enumeration on the website, trying to look for config directories, uh, anything like that. Any directories that are published by the web server, it's going to go dig into and collect and unload any pages that it can load in there. It's going to keep digging and digging and digging until it can't dig in anything else. So that's also the same thing that Burp's spider functionality does in Burp. So you want to check that out as well. Web spiders perform automated searching uh, searches on the target website and collect specific information about employee names, email addresses, etc. Attackers can use the collected information to perform further footprinting and social engineering attacks. Absolutely, this is good stuff. Mm -hmm.